Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm Jonathan Friedman, our virtual Radio Entrepreneurs segment. And our next guest up is Alex Cambanis with the GET Group. Welcome, Alex. Ah, thank you. Hi, Jonathan. How are you? Good, thank you. Welcome to Radio Entrepreneurs. Uh, why don't you tell our listeners a little about GET and what it is that you do? Uh, well, it's a fascinating story, actually. Our founder uh, was a gentleman uh, out of uh, Lebanon, actually, who, uh, after he his studies in the U.S., decided to uh, start a business in Dubai back in the late 80s. And uh, Dubai at that time was uh, just becoming what it is today. And uh, he traveled the world and focused on technologies uh, for IT and document security, passports, driver's licenses, and uh, got into this business of uh, secure passport printers, secure printers for uh, personalizing a passport and an ID card. That led to uh, some some growth in that uh, market where we developed uh, technology and personalized several passports around the world. And uh, We've provided the technology for the personalization of the U.S. passport, the, the current one, and actually there's a uh, next generation passport uh, that the U.S. is planning on uh, coming out with, which we're involved uh, as well. So that's uh, that's that's what the business is and how it how it all started. So so explain a little bit if you can. Is is the product the technology, or is the product the actual hardware uh, to be able to print the IDs and create? You no, know, it's a little. It's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of both. It's the, it's the technology, uh, and uh, initially uh, it was technology developed in in, in Japan, uh, which we we funded with a Japanese company, and it's the hardware. So it's uh, it's they're printers, but it's specialized technology, uh, specialized printing methods, specialized inks. And, uh, and now it's, uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, the technology is changing. There's uh, no inks. It's uh, laser engraving. It's, it's totally different. The substrates are different. So I would imagine that uh, because of the nature of the type of printing you're doing, most of your clients are in the government sector. Um, yeah. large, large organizations or government, um, are they actually uh, acquiring and then uh, you do a full installation of your printing equipment or, or are you, do they yeah. sub it out to you? You're, you're, you're not a sub printing shop. Well, that's, I mean, it's a, it's a very interesting industry because you can, uh, you can sub it out, you can uh, contract directly with the government. It, it really depends on the situation, on the requirements that each government places on you. Um, Clearly, it's a very global business. It's international, so we don't have the the, um, the 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 footprint in each country. So we may partner with uh, local local entities and and uh, or larger system integrators, depending on the situation. Hmm. And it, and I would imagine, given the nature of uh, the entities that you're selling to, it's an extremely long cycle. But uh, the reward is probably a very long contract. <laughs> oh my God! It is very very long. Uh, it's the sales cycle is, is long and uh, I've been, for instance, I've been working on uh, this current contract for the U.S. since 2013, really, uh, and it's just being deployed. So it takes, you know, it took five to seven years to just to go through the, the process of procurement, of proposals, proof of concepts, protests, and, and so forth. So it, it's a very long cycle. And obviously, without disclosing too much, are these exclusive or are there multiple vendors that provide this service or, or how, do, how do these things generally work? Um, it's, um, it's mostly, there's, there's several players in the industry. There are, there are large companies and medium-sized companies. Uh, the industry has seen some consolidation uh, recently, so there's not, there's, not, there's not too many out there. Hmm, interesting. So um, over the last uh, half dozen or so years from a consumer's perspective, we've heard all this stuff about um, real IDs and, um, you know, the different forms of identification that are that are coming online and are going to be necessary, at least in the U.S. and I suspect globally as well. Um, how are you how are you, your company positioned in the mix of all that? You have to. Um, adjust your technology to meet those needs, or you know, is it a, is it a chicken and egg? I, I guess question: Do you develop the technology and try and convince them that it's the right technology, or do they come to you with specs and say, "This is what we want to do. Build something to make it happen." 
How does well, that process work? Um, well, uh, I guess the, the conversation has, uh, has, has been between, you know, moving from the physical world and the physical IDs to the digital world. And, and, and mobility has really uh, helped that, that quest. And uh, the industry has developed standards. Uh, in fact, we've been very, uh, uh, very active in developing standards for mobile driver's licenses. Uh, there's an ISO standard, ISO, 18013-5 that is being worked on for it's been about four or five years where companies have gotten together and created the standard. Um, it, it, the issue. And when you say is this, per, forgive my David Hay, Alex. When you say a mobile license, it's essentially on a on a phone or a mobile device. It's basically, where, yes, it's digital basically digital taking, version. Taking your your physical driver's license and provisioning it on your phone so that you can use it um, uh, with your phone. Not showing it, not you know, it's not a visual verification. It's mostly a, an electronic verification. So very similar to we, we've all been accustomed to using our credit cards uh, with Apple Pay, for instance, or other methods. So it's a very similar way. Okay, uh, or, or I imagine more similar to something like a QR code or something, so that the average well, person or yeah, maybe, that, that, maybe not the same technology, but no, in no, terms of it's actually that's that that's one way of uh, of presenting your 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 mobile driver's license. Uh, it, it there is a QR code. Uh, it's uh, the, the data are encrypted, and but you can also use uh, NFC, uh, Bluetooth, uh, all, all all sorts of methods. Okay, because uh, you know, I started thinking in my mind, if you had a digital representation of a driver's license, wouldn't that be open to uh, duplication and fraudulent use, you would think, but when you start encrypting it and yeah. you know, I'm not actually seeing a picture of me or you on the, on the screen and somebody copying the images, um, makes it a little more difficult, I would imagine. Exactly, exactly. Everything's encrypted, data's, uh, data's protected. It's, it's actually much safer than your physical driver's license. I mean, right now in the U.S., we have a huge problem with uh, physical driver's licenses. I think people spend, I mean, there's 600, I've, I, we've kind of uh, figured that, calculated that it's about 600 to $700 million is spent uh, annually on fake driver's licenses. Uh, wow. And all these go out to China and they, you know, you know there's stories, uh, and, you know, several stories every year about fake IDs being uh, shipped from China to so it's a problem, and it's a problem when you have to, uh, when you think that, when, when you know that you get to travel using your driver's license and do other, you know, other um, uh, activities like opening a bank account or whatever. So it, it is a huge problem. So um, believe it or not, the pandemic has actually uh, kind of expedited the need for a, a touchless contactless uh, identity. So we're seeing a big uptick in, uh, in interest. Hmm. Very interesting. And are there other uh, next generation or other um, product categories or, or identification categories that, that you envision in the future that will be much more common uh, or things that uh, you know, the average Thanks. consumer is gonna have to get besides a driver's license and a passport? You know, I, I tell you what, my experience has been that things move really very slowly in this industry. So uh, procurement laws, uh, by the time the issuers get on, 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 on track with new technology, it just takes a very long time. So I can't even venture to imagine what it's going to be uh, 10, 20 years from now. You'd think that technology moves fast, but in, in our industry, it moves very slowly, unfortunately. Mm. Great stuff. Well, it's been a pleasure uh, getting to know you and learning a little bit about uh, about your company. And it's, uh, at least in my experience, probably the first time I dealt with somebody that deals almost exclusively in the government realm. Uh, yeah. And uh, Yeah, sometimes I, I feel sorry for myself. But. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things. You got to have a lot of staying power. You got you to have the long view, right? <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Fabulous. Our, our guest has been uh, Alex Gambanis on uh, Radio Entrepreneurs. He's the president and managing director of GET Group, and it's been a pleasure having you on Radio Entrepreneurs. If somebody is in the government space uh, and looking for procurement of uh, ID uh, printing capability, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? I suppose the best way is our website, which is uh, getgroupna.com. Excellent. Uh, it's been a real pleasure and uh, stay safe out there and, and uh, hopefully all your digital ideas in order. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jonathan. Thanks for the time. Thank you. And we'll be right back with another guest on Radio Entrepreneurs.